Ukraine's National Resistance Center has reported that the Russians have increased the number of inspections aimed at finding deserters on the temporarily occupied territories in Ukraine's east. The Russian army, at the request of the criminals in the Kremlin, is actively storming Ukrainian positions to claim at least some kind of victory. But the Russian command is actively using the tactics of meat assaults. However, not all the invaders want to die because of Vladimir Putin's insane ambitions, so the number of unauthorized abandonments of positions in the Russian armed forces has increased, National Resistance Center said. The National Resistance Center noted that in response, the Russians have increased the number of barrier troops and are searching for deserters in major cities. Thousands of Russian soldiers have reportedly deserted their posts in Ukraine as troop morale continues to plummet. In May, Ukraine's military intelligence agency reported that over 18,000 military personnel in Russia's southern military district have now abandoned their positions despite the ongoing fight with Ukraine. Troop desertion has been one of the most recurring problems for Russia in its war against Ukraine. Desertion and refusal to participate in the war is increasingly a problem for the Russian military despite the introduction of a harsher 10-year prison sentence for those who abscond. Vladimir Putin's declaration of partial mobilization in September 2022 also established new rules punishing those who fail to report to military enlistment offices, surrender, destroy weapons or engage in looting. It also prohibited military personnel from resigning their commission, making it legally impossible to leave the army alive and in good health. Since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022, Russian courts have tried around 8,000 cases involving the country's military personnel. The number of trials in 2023 increased five-fold compared to the previous year. Each month, an average of 700 sentences are handed down, according to the independent Russian media outlet Media Zona. Most cases deal with unauthorized departure from military units, 88%, disobeying orders and desertion. In many cases, judges have handed down suspended sentences which permit the armed forces to return convicted service personnel to the front line. That's according to Ivan Chuviliev, who works with Get Lost, a Russian organization that helps people evade conscription and leave the country. He also said that about 70% of those who have sought help with his organization this year were professionals under contract. Every one of them, in one way or another, had practically been forced to sign up. There are fewer and fewer mobilized service members in active duty because so many have died already, the human rights activist told. They all want to flee because they only see two options, either get killed or get dragged to court. In some cases, Trovilyev says deserters hid in Russian-occupied territories in Ukraine, which was dangerous as they faced the threat of torture, such as being forced to stay in a deep pit, exposed to the elements and being brought back to the front line if captured. The activist said that this was a common torture method, which was also employed when soldiers were caught drinking alcohol, arguing with superiors or leaving their units without authorization. As is known, the Armenian air defense system before the 44-day Karabakh war mainly consisted of various Soviet-made anti-aircraft missile systems, including the previous version of the S-300 air defense system. During the Second Karabakh War, these systems failed to work, being disabled by the weapons of the Azerbaijani army, including attack drones and high-precision missiles. After the end of the war, Armenia began to rapidly restore its military potential, primarily updating the air defense system with more modern anti-aircraft missile systems and radars of non-Russian origin. However, the outdated Soviet anti-aircraft missile systems still remain in the arsenal of the Armenian army. According to military political portal AviaPro, Yerevan transferred these weapons to Ukraine. The portal reports that in recent weeks, a significant number of obsolete Soviet S-125, Pechora anti-aircraft missile systems and Tochka U tactical missile systems have unexpectedly appeared in Ukraine, which can be explained by Armenia transferring its stockpiles to Kyiv. According to sources, Armenia, faced with internal and external challenges, may have decided to transfer its outdated air defense systems and missile systems to Ukraine in order to secure support and protection from Washington.
In the context of geopolitical instability and threats from regional players, Yerevan may have sought ways to strengthen its security, including through closer ties with Western partners. The S-125 and Tochka U systems were considered irrelevant for modern armed forces, but in the current conflict in Ukraine, they may prove quite useful. It should be noted that Armenia has ordered a large batch of more modern Akash 1S anti-aircraft missile systems from India, produced on the basis of Soviet S-125 anti-aircraft missile systems. Armenia purchases not only anti-aircraft missile systems and radars from India, but also ballistic and tactical missiles of various ranges. Indian sources reported that Armenia is negotiating the purchase of Prele ballistic missiles with a range of 500 kilometers and Brahmos hypersonic tactical missiles with a range of 1,000 kilometers. In this context, the transfer of its Soviet Tochka-U tactical missiles to Ukraine is entirely possible.